Today I'm going to show you the reason for having a good vocal booth with some standard home recording gear like these guys. True Sound Studios is in your ears. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ryan Wiesna. As always, we are here at my studio, True Sound Studios, and today I'm going to show you the reason for having a good vocal booth. So throughout the years of recording and people sending me their mixes that they were either record at home or maybe they record at a friend's studio and it just, you know, isn't up to the standards that they are wanting in the end. So they send me their tracks to mix and we always seem to have a problem after adding a whole bunch of compression to their vocals, we bring out the room sound. So maybe at the time of recording, when they were recording and they were playing back their audio, they weren't aware of how much of the room sound was actually coming back into the microphone. So today we're gonna to use some gear that is relatively inexpensive and would be some typical recording gear that you would buy if you were starting off with recording or you just didn't wanna do this as your full-time profession. So the microphone we'll be using in this video to test how the room sound is affecting the vocal will be a Rode NT1A microphone. Now I just checked the price of this and it was a bit over $200 including the pop filter when I checked on it this morning. So with this Rode NT1A microphone, I think this is a great, very versatile microphone. It does require phantom power, so it is going to limit the use on some of the interfaces, but most interfaces these days now come with phantom power. I'm actually using the Rode NT1A right now to record the audio for this video. So to power and record our Rode microphone, and for this test, we're gonna be using the Personas Audio Box. So our Rode microphone is gonna be plugged into channel one. We're gonna turn on the phantom power and we're gonna record this microphone totally dry, unprocessed, and it's just gonna go straight into the DAW. So to keep this test as neutral as possible, I picked one gain setting, one output setting, and I left that the same in each of the five different rooms that we're gonna be testing this mic out in. I even went as far as measuring the distance from my mouth to the pop filter to keep that the same every single test. Well, the only differences that you're going to hear is going to be the room and how the room is affecting the sound of my voice through the microphone. So one more thing before we start, unfortunately our vocalist had a cancel on us today and of course I was the villain. <laughs> I am not a great singer, um, so please don't listen to necessarily what I'm singing or how I'm singing it. You just want to listen to my voice in the room and how the microphone is picking it up. So to be able to hear the room sound the best being picked up through the microphone, please listen with some decent headphones or some studio monitors. So now that we got all that out of the way, let's get into the testing. I'll wait for you. So tell me what you're gonna do. I'll wait for you. So we are in a typical bedroom situation. We have like a standard seven and a half foot ceiling. Um, the flooring is hardwood flooring, but there are multiple area rugs in here. We have a typical bed, um, a small couch, and it's important to know that the door is closed. So this is your typical, like it's about a nine and a half foot by nine and a half foot bedroom. Hey, hey, check, check, one, two, hey. I'll wait for you, so tell me what you're gonna do. I'll wait for you. Okay, so we are in a much bigger space this time. This is the my kitchen and dining room. It's over 30 feet long. We're almost 15 feet wide. Same seven and a half foot ceilings. Uh, the floor is all real hardwood floor. And, you know, with different countertops and different flat surfaces in here, there are no rugs at all anywhere in this surface. Anywhere in this space, sorry. Hey, hey, 
Check. Check. One, two. Hey. I'll wait for you. So tell me what you're gonna do. I'll wait for you. Okay, so now we are in um, my basement and this is a even bigger room than upstairs. This is almost 40 feet. Um, lower ceilings though, this is only just a smidge over seven foot ceilings. Um, it is all a like waterproofed vinyl flooring down here. Um, for the most part, all parallel surfaces though. Um, the doors are open and there are some closets with cement block in them. So it is, yes, it is a, you know, a mostly finished basement, but we still got concrete on the floor. Hey, hey, check one, two. Hey, hey. I'll wait for you. So tell me what you're gonna do. I'll wait for you. Okay, so this time we are in a small bathroom. This bathroom is about four foot by four foot. Same thing, we got the seven and a half foot ceiling. Uh, the door is closed. It's all drywall in here. It's actually um, like a kind of like a textured um, laminate flooring. Hey, hey, check, check. One, two, hey. I'll wait for you. So tell me what you're gonna do. I'll wait for you. So lastly, we have my acoustically treated and designed vocal booth. There are no parallel surfaces in here. All the surfaces have been are either absorptive or reflective. Um, and this is the epitome of what a great vocal booth could be. Hey, hey, check, check, hey, one, two, yeah. So in conclusion, you could definitely tell like the bathroom was way more drastic than even I thought it was gonna be. Um, it almost has, almost has like a kind of cool sound to it. Um, but the living room, the basement and the bedroom, to me, I mean, they were a little bit different, but in the most part, they were fairly similar. I would kind of, I'd probably chunk those all into like one category. The bathroom being the most drastic and then the um, kitchen, dining room, basement and bedroom to be in like its own category. And then lastly, it would be the vocal booth, which obviously and hopefully should be your favorite because it is designed for vocals and for recording. But in the end, room sound is never a bad thing. It's something that I actually add to a lot of tracks to give things some life and not sound so super dry. But if you are a vocalist who is looking for a very dry vocal, maybe you are, uh, maybe you do hip hop music or pop music and you don't really like reverb and delay and you don't like effects on vocals and you want a really super dry vocal, a vocal booth is definitely gonna be a must for you. So these tests and experiments are great, but now what? Now what do we do? So the next video that I'm gonna do is going to be how to build a vocal booth. And I'm gonna give you three different options. One is essentially, hopefully gonna be free and you won't have to spend any money on it. The second one is gonna be a very, very cost effective, hopefully less than $30 to build a vocal booth. And then the third one is going to be like the all out vocal booth and it's gonna be some of the best bang for your buck. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something from it because I want you guys to record better vocals because if you ever want to send them to me to have them mixed, I would love to have a better product to start with. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to stay up to date with True Sound Studios, follow us on our Instagram page. We post on Instagram every day and we'll keep you up to date with pictures, videos, beats, 
tutorials, behind the scenes, and tips and tricks on all things recording. So once again, thank you for watching. I'm Ryan Wiesna. We're here in my studio, True Sound Studios, and True Sound Studios is in your ears. What did I just say? Today I'm going to show you the reason for having <laughs> having a good vocal booth. Hi. So if you want to, <laughs> what did I just say? I have no idea. <laughs> Pause, guys. Planes flying over. Yeah, we'll wait for you. We got time, bro. I'm going to show you the reason for having a heavy baba. Uh, I just can't remember anything. I don't know why I put the teleprompter so low down there. Using Stan Holman, Corman, and then in conclusion, <laughs> uh, I can definitely tell I've had a few drinks. <laughs> I'm done.